Hello and welcome to this session in which we look at perpetuities. In this session, we've been working with um, specifically the title of the chapter is discounting cash flow, discount discounted cash flow valuation. We looked at present value of a single payment. We looked at the present value of a multiple payment. We look at future value. Now we're going to be looking at something called perpetuities, and this is important, especially when we're, we're going to be analyzing stocks down the road. So first, we need to know what is a perpetuity, just like we learn what is an annuity before you can work with perpetuities, okay? What is a perpetuity? Perpetuity is basically a payment that goes forever. How, how does that work? It's exactly how it works. For example, the UK and Canada, they issued bonds, bonds, which is you lend them the money today and they're gonna pay you forever a certain amount of money. And that bond that you can give to your kids and grandkids and they'll keep getting the payments. So the payments is in perpetuity. So we need to find out how to value the present value of a payment that's in perpetuity. Actually, it's much easier than the annuity because the annuity has a limited amount of payment. The perpetuity, it's forever. So think of the perpetuity as an annuity that goes forever. Okay? So let's take a look at how perpetuity work and we will maybe work an example because in, perpetuities are important when we're going to be dealing with stocks, when we're, gonna, when we're going to be valuing stocks. Okay, We have seen a series of level of cash flow that can be valued by treating those cash flows as an annuity. An important special case of an annuity arises when the level stream of cash flow continues forever. And that's going to be for when we do stocks. Such assets are called perpetuity because the cash flow are perpetual forever. Perpetuities are also called consoles, particularly in Canada and the UK. And you could see example 6-7 for an important example of that. Because perpetuity has an infinite number of cash flow, we obviously cannot compute its value by discounting each one because it goes forever. So we cannot say we're going to discount this payment, then this payment, then this payment. Fortunately, as I told you, valuing a perpetuity turns out to be easier than an annuity. And here's the formula. You will take the, the, the present value of a perpetuity. It's the payment divided by the rate. For example, an investment offers a perpetual cash flow of $500 per year. So if you say, I'm going to pay you $500 per year. And the required rate of return is 8%. How much will you pay for this investment? You'll pay for this investment 600 6,250. So this is the present value of the annuity. C divided by R, the payment divided by R. In other words, you pay me today 6,250 and forever, I'm going to pay you $500. Okay. For future references, table 6-2 contains a summary of the annuity and perpetuity basic calculation we described. So you could refer to table 6-2. By now, you probably think you'll just use online calculators to handle annuity problems. Before you do, see our ne nearby work, the web box, if you want to do that, okay? But this is basically the basic formula of a perpetuity. Now, let's take a look at an example, like preferred stock, because stocks are examples of perpetuities, because when you own a stock and the stock pays dividend, which we'll see later on, we assume that the dividend will stay forever. It's not only it stays forever, we're going to look at where the dividend grows. So the dividend is forever, but there's a growth rate. So it's a start at a dollar, then it's going to become dollar twenty-five, dollar thirty-five. So it's going to have a constant growth rate, which we'll look at this also in a moment. Preferred stock or important uh, uh, regular stock is an important example of perpetuity. When a corporation sells preferred stock, the buyer is promised a fixed cash dividend every period, usually every quarter, forever. The dividend must be paid before any dividend can be paid to regular stockholders, since the term is called preferred, of course. Suppose Fellini Company wants to sell preferred stock at $100 per share. A similar issue of preferred stock already outstanding has a price of $40 per share and offers a $1 per, per quarter dividend. What dividend will Fellini have to offer if the preferred stock is going to sell? So in other words, right now what's happening is you have another preferred stock that's paying 40, uh, that has a price of $40, but it's paying $1 per quarter, $1 per quarter. So here's what we can do. The issue is the issue that's already out has a present value of $40, the price of the stock and a cash flow of a dollar every quarter forever because this is a perpetuity. 
So we need to find out what is the, the ongoing, what's R. So basically we need to find out what's R. So here's how it works. The present value equal to 40. The payment is, remember, C over R. So the formula is present value equals C over R. So for this example, we know the present value for this stock is $40. C, the payment is a dollar, and we don't know R. So 40R equal to 1. R equal to 1 over 40. R equal to 2.5%. So this bond, I'm sorry, not bond, this stock is paying 2.5%. Now, obviously, for the other stock, you have to be competitive. You have to pay 2.5%. So how much should the payment be? Now, the present value of the stock equal to the payment divided by R. We know the present value of the stock is $100. We know R equal to 2.5% or 0 0.05. And what we have to do, yes, R equal to 2.025, and we have to find X. X is the payment. So all we have to do is take 100 times by 0 0.025. So you have to pay per quarter $2.50. Now we find the payment because we want this bond. Sorry, I keep saying bonds. We want this second stock that's worth $100 to be paying 2.5. So investors will buy the stock. Otherwise, if not, they will buy the old one, the $40, and earn 2.5. So if you want them to buy the new stock, you have to pay them $2.50 per, per quarter. So the rate of return is comparable. Okay, so this is an example of how do we use perpetuities in finding the value of the stock or the rate or the payment. Here, we, in one problem, we find the rate. In the other problem, we find the payment in this example. Now we're going to add more complication to this, and this is what's going to what's going to be happening down the road, is those perpetuities, and this is what happened in the real world, they grow. So, for example, and usually stocks, specifically stocks, what happened? The stocks may start to pay you, for example, two two dollars per quarter. Then the company would say, "I'm going to increase this. I'm going to increase this payment ten cent every year." So you have to find out how much is your how much the value of the stocks if that growth rate is constant. So let's take a look at how do we do this. My system just froze. Give me one moment, please. Okay, it's working now. So growing annuities and perpetuities. So annuities commonly have payments that grow over time. Suppose, for example, we are looking at a lottery payout over a 20-year period. The first payment made one year from now will be 200000 And every year thereafter, the payment will grow by 5%. So here's what happened. You won the lottery. They're going to start pay you, paying you 20000 one year from now. Then every year after that, the payment will grow by 5%. So the next payment, the following 200, it's going to be 210. Then the third payment will be 210 times 1.05 will be 220, 500, and so on. What is the present value if the appropriate discount rate is 11%? Now, what we have to what we're dealing here is two things. We have a growth rate. The growth rate is the payment will grow at 5%, and we have a discount rate. The rate in which we're going to be earning uh, earning on the annuity discount rate equal to 11 percent now how do you find the present value now of a growing annuity this is growing this is not this is this is not constant a growing so if we use the symbol g to represent the growth rate we can calculate the value of a growing annuity using, using a modified version of the regular annuity so it's going to be the payment times and now you have to know how to do this? 1 minus 1 plus G. 1 plus G is G is 5%, the growth rate, divided by 1 plus R. R is 11%, divided by R minus G. R is 11 minus G, 5%. So if we plug in the formula, we plug in all the numbers, and obviously this is equal to 20. If we plug in the formula, we find the present value of a growing annuity is this much, 2,236,337. Okay, so 
this is an annuity, but it's gonna it's, it has the discount rate eleven percent, and the payment as is growing. There's also a formula for the present value of a growing perpetuity. Now, this is not an annuity; this is a perpetuity, and most probably we're gonna be most of the time we're gonna be using this problem, growing perpetuity, rather than growing annuity. So, growing perpetuity. There's also a formula, and the formula basically state c times the quantity one minus r minus g, or simply put, the payment. We take the payment divided by R minus G, the discount rate minus the growth rate. So let's assume this 200,000 is constant forever, is constant forever. How much the value of this lottery? It's 3,333,333 forever. Okay, so this is a constant. This is not constant. This is, yes, this is a, this is a perpetuity, a growing perpetuity, but it's not an annuity. It's forever. So it's the payment divided by the discount rate, 11% minus the growth rate. The notion of a growing perpetuity may seem a little odd because the payment get bigger every period forever. But as we will see later in this chapter, growing perpetuities are what stock prices is all about. When you buy a stock price, you're going to be getting dividend. And the assumption is dividend will be forever. And the dividend, it's not going to stay constant. The dividend will grow. So we're going to be working with this formula a lot down the road. So this is the present value of a growing perpetuity. Not a, per, not a regular perpetuity. A regular perpetuity is easy. It's C divided by R. All what we do is we'll take C divided by R, R minus G. Okay? Before we move on, there's one important note that our formulas for growing perpetuities and... Uh, and uh, annuities and perpetuities. In both cases, cash flow and formula is the cash flow that's going to occur exactly one period from today. So the payment will always assume it's happening one year from today. We're gonna be working a lot with perpetuities, regular perpetuities as well as growing perpetuities. So make sure you are comfortable with perpetuities before we get to the chapter where we need to value stocks, which is coming up in chapter eight, stock valuation which is chapter eight so make sure you are comfortable with that any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class and the next session what we're going to be covering in this chapter is i believe the effective effective interest rate apr and ear okay so the next session will be comparing rates the effective the effective of compounding so we're going to look at the effect of compounding. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class.